I'm Kurt Loader. This is the Week in Rock. With the grunge period of the early 90s slowly receding into rock history, Soundgarden, the metal-edged Seattle band, called it quits this week after 12 years and one chart-topping album. No reason was given, just a terse notice through the group's record company that the split was amicable and mutual. Here's a look back at the band that was. <laughs> Born in Seattle in 1985, Soundgarden was named after a piece of local pipe sculpture and set out to bring metal out of the sludgy 70s and maybe expand its audience too. There's a crossover, I would say, from the goes from a college crowd to uh, an independent metal crowd or a metal crowd. Yeah, the college students' little brothers and little sisters. Cut its first EP for the fledgling local indie label Sub Pop in 1987, moved on to another indie SST to release its first full album in 1988, and then signed with a major AM and spawned a hit with the album Louder Than Love. In 1989, original bassist Hiro Yamamoto left the band. He was replaced first by one time Nirvana member Jason Everman and ultimately in 1990 by Ben Shepard. In 1992, Soundgarden put in the first of its two stints on the Lollapalooza tour, hitting the road with such diverse acts as Ice Cube, Pearl Jam, and Ministry. A little bit petulant and bitchy about it <laughs> the first time. <laughs> Why? <laughs> um, you know, it's a little bit of the alternative lie sort of thing. <clears throat> we enjoyed the bill. We enjoyed playing with Pearl Jam, Ministry, Chili's, and all those guys. And, um, that was the thing we liked best about it. Everything else was just a little bit too, uh, too many people, too, too many interests. Yeah, just uh, kind of was, uh, you have to be there. So why did you decide to go out on Lala's and your last experience? Because we get to play with Metallica and the Ramones. Soundgarden's biggest hit came in 1994 with the album Super Unknown, which entered the Billboard chart at number one. Black hole sun, won't you come? The multi-platinum Super Unknown brought Soundgarden two Grammy Awards, one for Best Hard Rock Performance for Black Hole Sun and one for Best Metal for Spoon Man. You don't hear a lot of rock songs you know, with spoons in them, so it was sort of an experiment and it turned out really, really great. In 1996, Soundgarden released what has turned out to be the group's last album, Down on the Upside, which the band, for the first time, produced itself. It sold only 3 million copies worldwide. I know you guys toured throughout, pretty much through the fall, right? Through in the, in the winter? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. We, we just got done, actually. Yeah. And uh, any, are you jonesing to get back recording? Or you want to just take time off at the moment, or? Yeah, for the amount of time we spend not recording, it kind of seems silly because, we, you know, that's what bands do, they make records and people write songs, make records, seems like we don't spend enough time doing that, so hopefully we'll be doing that real soon. Soundgarden's members Chris Cornell, Kim Thale, Ben Shepard, and Matt Cameron haven't announced any future plans yet. The band played its last concert in Honolulu on February 9th. You can see lots of Soundgarden concert footage on MTV News Online, by the way, at MTV.com. 